Hey man, for Let's real, go, uh, kill beats yeah. with a heart of gold yeah. Life is the greatest story never ever told uh, Haters on top and the love's down below yeah. My money makes up for uh, all the extra foes Show my ass and I'm only living middle class That's all. So back to this So when I see Jamil Charlo I say he's Big Charlo He never ran away from nothing He never ran away from nothing He challenges everything and everybody he makes it clear he the king of the, he the big lion of the division. And he don't run away from nothing. Let's keep it pushing. Let's go to the next one. The other Charlo fight. I got Jamal Charlo fighting Juan Montiel. <laughs> Juan Montiel. He is fighting Montello. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell is that, bruh? Who the hell is that, bruh? Who the hell is that? Let me tell y'all straight like this. And I never said this because I always had res- I got plenty of respect for this man. People been hitting me up in my inbox like, main man, main man. Charlo is bum bash. And I had to reply to several of y'all and say you are out of your minds. You are out of your ever loving minds. If you think that I think that Charlo is bum bashing. The words bum bashing and Charlo don't even go together. I said no. And y'all, y'all kept challenging me like, yo, you need to look it up, man, man. You need to check on that. I feel confident that Charlo is not bum bashing, fam. Let's take a look, shall we? Let's take a show, though. You know what I mean? Because we're going to do this with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all going to start with this. Charlo bum bashing. Man, this is Charlo. This is Lions only up in this jump. You know what I'm saying? Man, y'all tripping out here, man. Let me look at my main man resume. I want to see what my man been doing since he been at middleweight. Let's run it down, shall we? Bum bashing. Man, y'all out of y'all mind, bro. I couldn't even believe I even seen y'all writing me something. This is Charlo. There's no way y'all could be saying he bum bashing, man. Let me see. Charlo's resume since he has been at the middleweight division. All right? Let's look at this. He has beat Sergey Deryevchenko. Okay. Dennis Hogan. Okay. Brandon Adams. Okay. Matt Korobov. Okay. Uh, Hugo Centino Jr. Right? And oh, we definitely can't forget this one. Jorge Sebastian Highland. And those have been all of his fights at the middleweight division. And y'all talking about he bum bashing. I ain't gonna lie, Mo. He just like bum bashing. <laughs> he bum bashing like a mug champ. I'm going to roast Charlo on this one. You dig? Because guess what makes this all so bad about Monatello? This is a voluntary defense, man. This ain't no mandatory. This ain't nothing he got to do. This is a voluntary defense on a man with four losses and two draws. A voluntary defense. You, you, you got trash talk out here for over a year with Benavidez. Back and forth. Back and forth. You want to break necks. You want to do this. You And you go and get Monatello and you bum bash some more on a voluntary? Oh, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I'm, I got to be tripping. I got to be. Let me check something real quick. Let me look at these divisional rankings if I can real quick because there's no way bum bashing like this bro it got to be somebody there's got to be a reason right there's got to be a reason let me look at the wbc and see if there's anything anybody other than modelos over here you know what i'm saying hold on hold on hold on canelo alvarez wbc champion aka the franchise champion whatever so we got jaime mungia in the number one spot i can live with that I can live with Jaime Mungia versus Jamal Charlo. What's the problem? Jaime Mungia taking short notice opponents. He can't, but well, they probably, I don't know if they're willing to 
to commit Mungia to that, but why is he in the WBC if they ain't? You number one in the WBC. Jaime Mungia versus Charlo could have been ordered by the WBC. What the problem is? What the problem is? Instead, we talking about Montreal. Then you got Sergei Deryovchenko, number two, who's been beat. Selecki. Selecki got plans. And then, of course, uh, Montiel. 22 wins, four losses. Oh, two draws. I'm sorry. Four losses, two draws. I did say two draws, right? And the rest of the people never heard, never seen, No, not worth the discussion. So there's nobody in Charlo's division other than Mungia. And you saying you don't want to go to 168. Fine. Now, people may say, yo, main man, he, he ain't got to go and face David Benavidez. He ain't got to do this. I want, I want to remind y'all of something. Hold on, hold on. This is what's throwing me off with, 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 with Lord Charlo. This is what's throwing me off with him. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to take y'all back to what this man was talking about. Hold on. I know I got that right here. Let me let me hide the schedule for a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Alright. This is why I'm a little messed up with Charlo. So when the Andre situation comes Charlo's way, he says that they ain't paying enough. Seven million dollars, he make that anyway. Remember these quotes. They playing off his name. Seven million, I get that anyways. To, so to unify, make it make sense. That's all cap. I have never talked to Eddie. I'm the WBC middleweight champion. He fight at 68 and got no belt, no title. He got nothing, but I should be the, uh, this guy one day again, Hope. Oh, okay, so you big talk. Yeah, you get dropped off pay-per-view. You don't want to entertain $7 million. You get that anyway. Your numbers on pay-per-view were shaky, baby. Very shaky. But you the big diva. You the big star. So we expecting you to move like the star. Yet you've been reduced from pay-per-view to fight Monatello. And you telling David Benavidez no. Because clearly I thought you had something better. You telling Andre no. Even though I don't trust Andre. But then I got Eddie Hearn saying the same thing in recent interviews. Oh, Andre to go there. He can come here. Whatever he want to do. I don't I don't understand. So you got everybody around you trying to make something happen with you. You bossing up like you the man. A hundred grand. You moving all the units. Everybody wants to see Charlo. Everyone playing on your name. Yet you get reduced from pay-per-view to fight Monatilo. That don't make no sense, bruh. This is why we roasting you. Then you do this on a voluntary. You don't you don't say, you know what, I'm going to take a chance and go see what's up with this Andre thing. Why not go make the 7 million, take his belt and come back? Forget that type talk. Or maybe I can go talk to Al or talk to the soups or whatever, see if we can get Andre on this side and throw him a bag and see if we can hold his feet to the fire and call his bluff. Forget that type talk. On a voluntary defense, you down to fight Monte Monticello. So, sir, of course, I have no choice but to say you are bum bashing. You are bashing of the bums. You are fighting nobody. I can't say this because I had your back through the Centinos and the in the in the in the, in the, in the Sebastian Highlands of the world. We had your back, man. Through the core balls to the world but we can't continue to defend you on, on voluntary defenses fighting dudes with four losses and two draws and saying well nobody don't want to fight me look here man we believe that through the first three fights that you had at middleweight something got to give somewhere us as boxing fans only can take but so much you know what i'm saying how much do you want us to take, Charlo? We try to look out for. We thought you was what you did at 54 was nothing short of amazing. Nothing short. I give you credit for it. And people, most don't man, who he beat, who he beat. I thought he was the most dominant-looking fighter at the class. 
just to come up to 60 turn not involved in nothing major nothing involved here we are like six seven fights in at, at 160 and you fighting brandon adams and you fighting uh uh sebastian highlands and now modelos like i don't I, it's no more defending them there's nothing else to say about this what possible defense can anybody come up with? Man, man, they're avoiding them. How many fights we gonna keep saying that? How many times you gonna keep banging that drum? How many times we gonna keep saying it? He got to do something for himself. He got to take a risk. When the last time has little Charlo over here took a risk? When the last time he just took a risk? When the last time he says, I'm gonna go for greatness? Or has he just been complacent? Sitting there, waiting on something to fall in his lap, Hoping for a, a magic Canelo cloud to come over him and just rain on him. The Canelo fight. That's what we waiting on, right? That's what we waiting on. Y'all keep making excuses. Is he a talent all day? Is he a damn good fighter all day? Without a doubt. Give him chances against everybody. Beat most of them, I think. But at the end of the day, you got to show me, cuz. I can't be out here every time we turn around for a child of man look they ducking him they ducking him yeah andre ducking him bro he, look at his resume at, at middleweight look at his resume at middleweight and then you giving us this nah BBC. nah you can't do us like that i got my main man 100 grand l dub boxing in the building everybody they hear the sound of my voice please go check out l dub that's the man right there man y'all already know what's up fam what's up with you man uh, I called this Maul Montiel fight soon as Montiel uh, slept Kirkland on Christmas. Yeah, he slept Kirkland. Yeah, but it's just, I think what's so disappointing about this, Lawrence, is the fact that we've been waiting, man, and, and, and seeing numbers tossed around and seeing all of these fighters just tossing his name around, it just makes you like, bro, like, you got no, there's nothing else. To, I don't, I'm not looking forward to this whatsoever. Maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll do some more homework on because I'm not that familiar with Mon Monticello, Montiel, whatever his name. I, I, I he beat Kirkland, but that doesn't impress me much. You know what I'm saying? It, okay, but that, not for this dude, not for the WBC middleweight champion, not for that dude. Nah, nah. I'll come back to this. Let me see what y'all time on first. It's just, this is no excuse. This is just ain't no covering, bro. He's now little Charlo. He is Little Charlo, the bum basher. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and that's just as simple as that. You know what I mean? Like, y'all can say he ain't bum bashing, but then look at his resume and say, well, what else can I say? That's all I'm saying. I don't use that word loosely, but it is what it is, bro. What, they, what, what you call this, is just that's the only word for it. I'm trying to get this off the screen. Hold on, fam. Uh, I hear it. All right, let's keep on with this PBC schedule, man, because that just, I mean, and then on top of that, you're clogging up the lane, bro. Like little child, I mean, well, big Charlo, Jamel ain't gonna keep waiting on you to clog up 160. He's trying to give you time to make your make your mark and get the hell out of Dodge where he so he can move up. I'ma tell y'all straight like this. The way Jamel moving, he gonna fuck around and get the Canelo fight before Jamal. Oops. I'ma say that one more time for the people in the back. The way Jamel moving, he gonna mess around and get the Canelo fight before Jamal. I'm just saying. Love it or hate it, that's just the facts of the matter. Let's get back to the schedule. Love it or hate it, that's just the facts of the matter. Man, man, they avoiding him. Man, I ain't, I ain't buying that one no more. They was avoiding him at once upon a time. They may have still, but that doesn't mean that his side can't make nothing happen. That doesn't mean that his side can't throw him into something, give him some risks, give him some glory. He needs more than just Julian J. Rock Williams. That ain't gonna keep on getting it for him. He needs more than Julian J. Rock Williams. And you want to make him a bigger attraction. You want to make him a bigger star. You got to give him better names. You got to give us something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's up, Earl? He says, yo, main man, if the middleweight fighters don't fight him, find someone that he can fight, not named Benavidez. But that's just a whole thing. Why avoid Benavidez? Benavidez's next fight is for the, um, w is an eliminator fight, right? So he's going to be the WBC mandatory if he beats Uskatiki. Well, guess what? You the WBC uh, champion. You want to put yourself in prime position for Canelo, which still doesn't guarantee Canelo for Charlo. Still, go up there and beat, uh, go up there and beat, um, go up there and beat him. Go up there and beat Benavidez. 
You know what I'm saying? My main here uh, listening to the words of Eddie Hearn and what he out here talking about when it comes to uh, Demetrius Andre and what's his next moves and everything like that, man. And he's saying some good stuff. Make you think, man. And make you go, you know, Eddie know what he's saying the right stuff. And he's alluding to outside of the fact pretty much that beyond Gennady Golovkin at 160 pounds, he really ain't seeing much for Demetrius Andre. Now, I think also one name that he leaving off the list is uh, also Jaime Mungia. And I think that this, I guess he's not saying it much because he's not really in business with Mungia. And Mungia is over there with Golden Boy for the most part. But at the end of the day, that's another name also. Jaime Mungia is rated number one in the WBO. So, of course, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It makes perfect sense for Demetrius Andre to pursue something like that. So, but he's saying that Gennady Golovkin is the best option. Because Gennady Golovkin... Over there at the IBF champion, the next two spots under him, the number one and the number two spots are vacant. So, and according to Eddie Hearn, and the plan is well known that it seems that Gennady Golovkin want to hide out and just kind of chill on out and all the way to the end of the year, possibly, to face Ryota Murata. And, of course, this is a big fight in the a part of the world where he's from and where Murata is from, Murata, Murata being from Japan. And uh, we know uh, Gennady Golovkin being of Asian descent as well. So, of course, it'll be a big fight in that part of the world. And he's thinking dollar signs. And so, Eddie Hearn, who's also in business with Gennady Golovkin, is trying to make the suggestion, like, man, look, Golovkin, you can take on Andre in the summer, turn around, boom, but turn around and maybe try to go after um, uh, Ryota Murata by the end of the year. And one thing that's funny that he's saying, he also throwing Charlo in there for Gennady Golovkin, which we know that's very improper. You know what I'm saying? So, he's saying that that's the plan for Gennady Golovkin. And, of course, he's keeping Canelo Alvarez's name out the situation totally. The thing is, Eddie Hearn has got to be very delicate when it comes to Canelo Alvarez because he only got, what, one more fight left with him? After the Billy Joe Saunders fight, well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, with, which direction that Canelo goes into. Remember, he only signed up for two fights with Eddie. So, Eddie got to be real delicate when it comes to Canelo Alvarez. You know what I mean? But, you know, at the end of the day, he's making some good suggestions. Now, I'm reading this quote right here. And he says, and I quote, so if you're a champion, I just think that you should be looking to fight a champion. Gennady is talking about fighting Murata on December 31st. Do this one in the summer. Unify, then unify again. Or maybe an undisputed fight with Charlo next. Or Charlo, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then he says, um, he starts to go in on Charlo. Hold on for a minute on that. But he's saying pretty much, yeah, just take this Andre fight. And the crazy thing about all of this is that Eddie is the glue with all of this. And it makes me wonder, does Eddie really mean what he say? Because as much as he has an obligation, I guess, to promote Demetrius Andre, who's pretty much all, all the way his fighter, Gennady Golovkin is just like partially his. He's just like into a co-promotional thing with Gennady Golovkin. So, I mean, but he still has to work for Gennady Golovkin and still kind of work in his best interest also. It's almost like a similar situation here with Kel, I mean, with Kel Brook and uh, Amir Khan. Couldn't make it happen because Khan wanted to go into a totally different route. There was nothing that Eddie can do about it. Eddie didn't have the juice. So in this situation, don't look like he got the juice. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, man. He's, he's putting some good stuff out there. And he's saying a lot about what Andre and Gennady Golovkin should do. But now I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking back to Eddie, though. Because... Eddie is talking about a bunch of stuff about Golovkin, and then he's also saying with Jamal Charlo, which he's perfectly right. He's saying that Jamal Charlo, what are you doing? You ain't pretty much fighting nobody. You fighting Montadello. You know what I'm saying? You Montiel. You could be doing other things. You could be facing Demetrius Andre. Look at some of these quotes right here, man. According to Eddie Hearn, he says that Gennady Golovkin is a great champion. He's planning to fight Moroda. We just talked about that on the 31st. He's saying that Demetrius Andre can't make 160 forever. So if you're Charlo, if you're Golovkin, let's do it. He's also indicating, and we're gonna get back to Demetrius Andre's weight a little bit, but he's saying that the weight, he's saying that he's he's struggling to make the weight, and he ain't gonna be at 160 forever. So the, the clock is ticking. When they hear stuff like that, I don't know if Eddie is trying to make Andre look vulnerable, or if he's keeping it, you know, for 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 time purposes, trying to speed things up. But we're gonna get there. But he goes in and starts speaking on Charlo. And like I said, he 100% right about Charlo. Charlo fighting an you know, a, a, a unknown cat with four losses and two draws on a voluntary. And, and trying to play diva out here. Trying to say people playing off his name and he won't fight for $7 million. Well, it seems to me, 
according to what Eddie Hearn is talking about, he's saying that Demetrius Andre will now go over to Fox for the same amount that Sergey Deryevchenko. Here you go. Demetrius will go and fight on Fox. It's not a problem. He's not expensive. It's going to cost Charlo the same as Sergey Deryevchenko. That's bold. That's very bold. He's even putting the price out there like it ain't even an expensive thing to do. That's very bold. I just, I mean, how, if the, as much as they so resistant, to, Charlo is so resistant to the Andre situation, it make me wonder, like, damn, is, is there some small print that we don't know about or something? What the hell is going on? But anyway, so he like, Charlo, you need to get it together. And he write about that. And he like, Gennady Golovkin, y'all need to get it together. And he write about that. What are you going to do, Gennady Golovkin? See, Gennady Golovkin acts this way because he's spoiled. And he came to the zone being spoiled. And that's just the facts of the matter. What are you talking about, man, man? Remember, the zone attracted Gennady Golovkin on the premise that he was going to get that Canelo Alvarez fight, which he never got since he's been at the zone. They gave him a beautiful deal, stock options and all that, over a hundred million dollars, a beautiful deal. But, and they pretty much, he knew, they knew that the only reason that he pretty much came over there, cause he was being shopped around at that time, was to see Canelo Alvarez, which was promised to him. And Gennady Golovkin has said in the past, that Canelo knew at the time what was up. We are, he already knew how the suits fell about and you knew that eventually we gotta meet anyway. This is why Gennady Golovkin felt so assured when Canelo Alvarez was ready to fight him, right before the Zero Meta fight. He was so assured to push Canelo out the way, like, no, I already have a contract to fight this man and, and to fight Zero Meta and to do this and to do that. He felt so assured because he had a deal already worked out with the bosses that it just got to happen. So when we see Gennady Golovkin moving the way he moves, it's because I'm sure he knows what he worked out and the kind of situation he was in. Now, he's restructured his deal since then because of the whole, you know, situation and they had, the, you know, too much money they was paying him. He got his contract lowered. And who knows if that provision is still in it. But at once upon a time, it definitely was. And this is why he moved around like a little spoiled brat doing what he wanted to do because he knew. Y'all know my plan. I, I, I'm going to fight bum after bum. And as long as I get that Canelo fight, that's why I'm here. So now that they're not giving it to him, what is he doing? He holding out. Well, Canelo's gone now. And he, oh, he's with Eddie and he's dead. But they're doing whatever he's doing. So guess what? I'm going to hold out now and make this butter off y'all. Y'all didn't give me what y'all told me y'all were going to give me, so I'll sit it out for Murata. Hopefully he does something. Who knows what he's going to do in the meantime, between time. Demetrius Andre just makes sense. Especially, it's, as you can see now, with Eddie Hearn, what he's doing is trying to make Demetrius Andre look vulnerable. He's taking that last performance the other night, and the way he's spending it is, well, you know, now he's looking bad. You know, he I ain't going to say looking bad, but now he's looking like he's beatable. He says in the first couple rounds, he looked like a pound-for-pound pound fighter. Then he started to get tired. He was speaking in a way of trying to entice these fighters. Now, now look what you see. Maybe now... He's not the rangy, southpaw, youthful guy that he used to be. Maybe y'all can take advantage. And they're saying he's, he's putting out there, he's struggling to make the weight. Trying to also allude to the fact that's why his performance was so bad. Because he's struggling to make the weight. So, he's trying to entice them to come on down. Take a shot, if you can. Now, like I said, he's in the midst, so he got to also work with Gennady Golovkin. So, as much as he says these things and he's spinning it the way he's done it now, I take y'all back to before the Demetrius Andrade and Liam Williams fight. How was Eddie Hearn talking then? Seems to me before the fight, before he knew that Andrade was going to put this kind of performance on, the way he was talking, well, he may be, he's talking like if he was there with Gennady Golovkin, this is some of the stuff that the kind of way that they will feel from that side. And this is this. These are some of the quotes that he had out before Andre and Liam Smith. I'm hoping Andre looks brilliant, knocks this guy out, and when we scream and shout from the rooftops, he needs that kind of performance. He didn't do that. If you give a safe performance, you always give those people an opportunity to say he's boring. I'm going to fight somebody else. He needs an impressive win. It's important for Andre not to play it safe against Williams the way he did in this fight against Sulecki in June of 2019. And 
What people got to understand is that Andre has been showing that he's been having a putting out problem. Looked at the Sulecki fight. One of the reasons that it was said that he came from 54 to 60 was because he was struggling to make the weight and it was hindering his stamina down the stretch. Showing signs that it at 60. So, of course, Eddie is saying that he has to go to 68 because he's showing the same signs now. But Eddie's saying here, though, yo, look, if he gave a bad performance, then what? I mean, you need a good performance to be sold. You need you need to entice these champions to want to fight you. So before the fight, he was saying he need a great performance. And if you don't give a great performance, who's going to want to fight you into that into that manner? You can't give a stinker. Now, he didn't give a... It was an exciting fight because he was pushed to the limits and people were wondering, like, what the hell? So that made his fight exciting. But at the end of the day, Eddie was like, look, you needed a bomb burner, bro, to attract the Golovkins. To attract the, to have Canelo even look twice at you, which is unfortunate because Andrade has been calling for those fights for years, and it's sad that we even down to this point. It's true for the matter, but that's what he was saying before the fight. So, does he go back to Golovkin and say, "Well, I don't know if anybody gonna be checking for Andrade now, so maybe we should think about actually doing this, maybe you and Munji or something like that." You gotta watch Eddie. You gotta watch Eddie. But but he, he his plan for Andrade. It do make sense, man. It would be nice to see Golovkin do that, take an initiative, and actually do something to earn the Canelo fight. It would be nice. But other than that, I'm sure there's a good backup plan in effect for Demetrius Andre. And that backup plan is clearly, if Billy Joe Saunders loses to Canelo Alvarez, I feel like Eddie Hearn will, will have a, another fight waiting for Billy Joe if Demetrius Andre moves up to 68, and he still makes that fight happen. I think that that'll be a backup plan. Either way, Eddie Hearn wins. Either way, it's all in-house. And either way, he coming out on top. Everybody winning. Some contingency plans. But it's really messed up if we end up going that route because, of course, the fight between him and Billy Joe will lose a lot of luster. But it, and, and, and to have to go that route and refuse a Charlo and a Gennady Golovkin. And Charlo, man, I just, I don't understand it, bro. I just don't understand it. I can't have, I can't have Eddie Hearn out here talking about some they'll take the same amount that Sergey Duryevchenko took and come over there on Fox and ain't nobody responding that's hard to take bro it's hard to take so at the end of the day Demetrius Andre's routes the probable route outside of Jaime Mungia seeing what Jaime Mungia is going to do with Suleki I mean that'd be a good opponent because if Jaime Mungia beats Suleki that's a common opponent that he'll have with Demetrius Andre and especially if Jaime Mungia get rid of Suleki better than Andre did because Andre showed some signs of stamina issues down the stretch of that fight. And it became a boring fight. The one fight that Eddie Hearn was speaking about. So what if Mungia go in there and capitalize and get rid of this dude? You know what I'm talking about? So I don't know, man. Those are just some options for Demetrius Andre. I think the most probable option, though, I think Billy Joe, the, the loser of Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo. That's why I think he has two next. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. All day. Thumbs up for the homie, man. I catch y'all up on the next one, man. Much love to the fam, man. And to the next video, man. Peace out.